we got ourselves two awesome episodes of Korra. Um, really, really nice episodes. Really, really good. Uh, the first episode. Um, we the, now there's two episodes uh, per week now, so that's really exciting. But it also means that this season will be over within just a month, uh, probably just about mid August or so. Anyways, the two episodes. The first episode is really exciting. So they rescue all the Airbenders from uh, the Earth Queen, and we actually get some nice moments between uh, Jinora and uh, I think his name's Kai. So yeah, that's really exciting. Um, what else is there to say? Get some good bits between, uh, oh yeah, to oh yeah, uh, Lin Beifong joins them, which I thought was really exciting. One thing that this, uh, season is supposed to focus on most of is that, <clears throat> um, is that it's supposed to focus on Lin Beifong. In the second episode, <laughs> I, I think this is the best, ep I think that's the best episode of the season so far, the second episode, episode five. Um, yeah, so they rescue the airbenders and, uh, Tenzin... Uh, part way parts ways with Korra to take the Airbenders to the um, to the uh, Air Nomad temple, while Korra looks for more Airbenders in the Earth Kingdom. And the Earth Queen has declared war on Korra, basically. So that's exciting. Uh, but in the second episode, that uh, evil Airbender, that villain, actually, well, yeah, I get. Uh, I missed actually the first part, bit of the first part of the the episode four. But what it is, they saved Sparky Sparky Boom Girl, or whatever her name is. And apparently she and the Airbender are a couple. The one guy's driving there kissing. He's like, is that necessary? <laughs> is that necessary for that matter? I don't know. So yeah. Uh, but I think the next, the fifth episode, that was a good one. I think it was called The Metal Claw or something. We learned that uh, Lin has a sister. More importantly, we learned that uh, Toph Beifong uh, kind of got around a bit. I mean that. I literally mean that. Uh, apparently, uh, they're both sisters, but half-sisters. They both had uh, different fathers, which I think is exciting, which could say a bit about Toph. Maybe she had one kid with Sokka? Maybe she had one kid with Zuko. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going with Zuko! <laughs> what? All of you got a life-changing journey with him? Now it's my turn! Some good bits with Eska and Desna, Korra's father, and Zuko, so that's good. I will. I'm gonna watch episode four again because I missed like the first few minutes. I saw like I know the gist of what happened. But anyways, episode five. They get there and uh, uh, Lin Beifong's sister. I think her name is Sue. I believe she just has everything. She's you know she's she owns a huge. She basically runs an entire huge city. She's married. She has five children. Um, is basically a millionaire. Well, you see, this is nicely juxtaposed with Lin, who, to an extent, has nothing. She's a chief of police, one failed relationship attempt with Tenzin, and that's it, really. And you really see that effect going into her. She, There's clearly some history between the two, and uh, I think we're finally going to learn the origin of that scar on her, nasty scar on her face. So that'll be exciting. Um... Yeah, uh, anyways, the main story is that, um, uh, her sister's, uh, daughter is, uh, is an airbender named Opal, and, uh, she's really, she's really cute, actually. Um, and <laughs> some great bits between, uh, her and Bolin, I think, uh, <laughs> Bolin love interest number ten, <laughs> eight and a half or whatever, I mean, let's see, uh, <laughs> let's see, there's Korra there, oh yeah, Varric shows up, the greatest character! <laughs> Of the entire series, Varric shows up again. I was so happy. I'm like, oh my god, it's Varric! And uh, whatever her name is. <laughs> I was just laughing my head off. Um, but I think the best part of, the, of these two episodes is episode five. At the very end, when like, um, it's at night, Opal just wants to talk with Lynn, and she's just like, get the fuck out of the door. And, um, and she's sad, and then... Korra's just like, what is your problem? I see what your sister's saying. You're just a lonely bitch. And then you see just the, the look on uh, Lin Beifong's face. She's like, oh, she's just she's crying. Because she knows that Korra's right. She knows that her sister's right. And that she has nothing, really, when you think about it. And we also get a bit of insight into uh, her sister's background. She was a criminal, basically. She was a pirate. She was like a rebel. I, I love rebel characters. 
she was a pirate, she was in a traveling circus, and she just never was happy, and she got, I think she must have done well, she bought a plot of land, met her husband, and basically then everything came along as is, five kids, um, as happy as anything could be, but, you know, the, apparently the two haven't spoken in 30 years, so, but I think they're about, I would say they're about 50s, maybe, in their 50s, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, probably, maybe older. But this says a lot about Toph, in a way. I mean, apparently she was a very strict mother. So, there's that. Um, but I, I'm still curious about all the other... Uh... See, this is, the, this, this is ultimately a bit of a problem with Korra. Nothing wrong with what's being presented, but I just want to know what happened to all the other characters. Zuko's still around, Katara's still around, Aang is, of course, dead, Sokka's dead, Toph is assuming dead. Assumingly dead. Um... Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, her, uh, anyways, uh, Sue's five kids, um, two are metal benders who create their own game. One of them's an artist. Uh, one of them's a, uh, a financer for her father's, uh, I mean, for her husband's architect, uh, architecture. And, you know, one of them's the airbender, Opal. Um, you get to see her the most, of course. Uh, but then, continuing where we left off with the airbenders, uh, parent, um, Kaya, who's training a few airbenders, Kaya and a few two attendants' kids who are training some airbenders on Airbender Island back in Republic City, the big airman, the big air <laughs> villain, join, uh, joins them unknowingly, hoping to meet the Avatar. And then Kaya, at the end of the episode, figures it out that it's him, and the two get in a fight, and uh, he escapes. So, yeah. So, yeah, once again, uh, the villains are very exciting. Um... But I like that they're finally going into this whole, because this was talked about a bit, like, I think when season two, even before season two came out, that season three would have a huge focus on uh, Lin Beifong, and right now it's proving that it is. So, yeah, I'm liking where this is going. Um, in a clip that was released in Spanish, the two will fight, uh, Lin and her sister, Sue. I think her name is Sue. <laughs> if I'm wrong, please correct me, and then I'll just... Uh, Put it in an annotation or something. Uh, the two, I think, will fight eventually. So the, the, these two are just like, like the, they just want to like go at each other. Well, Lynn more, or so. I mean, hmm. Don't really get much. Don't really get much with uh, Sami or uh, Mako much. They have some neat bits though. They leave their fam. Mako and Bolin leave their family. Hope they will return. Mako leaves this scar for his grandmother. Um, hmm. See. Uh, hmm. What else is good? Some good Ka Kai and Janora bits. There's some funny bits of that. Um. Uh. What else? She can still do that spirit thing, Janora, but now she can actually talk to people while she's in this spirit form. Um. So I'm curious where this is all gonna going. We've got quite a few things going on here. We got Tenzin training the Air Nomads. We got these four villains who want to just murder Korra, and we got uh, Lin Beifong and um, her story arc. So I think this is uh, setting up to be a pretty good season. Um, it's already starting off way, way better than season two. Season two was all over the place. I mean, I don't, I, I've sort of rethought about season two a bit. I don't hate season two. It's just... It's a bit of a letdown, and there's some things are a bit all over the place. There are some good episodes, though. I mean, Beginnings are the absolute two greatest episodes of, I think, the, the of Legend of Korra and Avatar and the Last Airbender. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but, okay, I'm not talking about season two. So, yeah, these two episodes are great. I like episode five a little more, but that's just me. And, man, this season's just going to be done in just a few weeks, basically. Um, hmm. So, excuse me. So, yeah, I'm excited, and, uh, I will, um, uh, see you all later. Bye.